Hello, this is the trade site Forex Market Preview and International Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Sunday, the 18th of October 2015 and ending Friday the 23rd. Hope you had a good trading week. Let's look at the dollar index daily chart. And we do have a nine bar startup phase complete despite the fact that the dollar bounced a little bit on Friday. Here's the uh, look at that ninth candle that's just formed and closed. Uh, we have been banging around here for the last uh, eight weeks or so right in the same range between uh, 96 and a half and 94 on the uh, dollar index so nothing super exciting to talk about there let's look at the uh, euro dollar obviously our most popularly traded pair it's actually been fairly contained uh, over the last uh, couple of months really between the 1.0800 and the 1.1700 at the high but really 1.1500 so that's about a 700 uh, pip range for the majority of the time since last uh, April, middle of April, We're talking about six months. That's a pretty narrow range for six months. Uh, pounds, not much more interesting, of course. Uh, trading here in a in a fairly narrow range as well. It did have a big day up on uh, Wednesday. By the way, if I go, let's take a look this week at the uh, weekly charts of these, just to get an idea of what uh, the broader picture is. So this shows you uh, back into 2012, so it's like three years worth of data. And you know you can see last year was uh, some better ranges, obviously on the pound, uh, all the way from uh, 1.4800 all the way up to 1.7200. So that's you know 2,400 pips up, and then all the way back by the end of the year. Uh, here's the uh, euro dollar. Uh, looking in 2014, it was uh, basically a drop from the 1.4000 level to the 1.1500. So that's you know that's uh, 2,500 pips. Meanwhile, if you look at just this year. Like I said, basically a 1,000 pip range there. So it's much more contained this year, and yet we've still had a decent year. It's been a nice year overall. We had the usual slowdown over the summer for a bit, but then things picked up a little earlier in August because of the uh, volatility out of the banks. And uh, so no complaints overall. Here's a look at the Aussie dollar. Also flat this week. Uh, no new major signals on any of these in terms of uh, exhaustion signals. No breakout points on the charts that we're staring at. So just straightforward trading. That was the pound yen. Here's the euro yen. This has been really flat this year. Uh, very unexciting activity in the euro yen. All right, let's look at the 30-minute uh, candles. We can see the whole week. And again, not very exciting. Monday and Tuesday were very flat here in the euro inside of about a 60 pip range. Um, Wednesday, we did break out and run. Thursday, we came back. Friday, very unexciting. Uh, meanwhile, on the pound, Monday was flat. Tuesday, uh, back and forth with drop. Wednesday, all the way back up. Total range for the week on the pound was 400 pips. Thursday and Friday, though, were very flat. So it wasn't consistent between the year on the pound where the movement was during this week. Uh, all right, so in terms of the charts and looking forward, I mean, there's really nothing substantial to say. Like I said, it's kind of been a narrower year, um, and there's not much we can do about that, of course. So let's look at the data that's due this week as we come into the middle part of October. Uh, and head into the uh, the home stretch of the year back. Uh, it's usually a good period here all the way until the week before Christmas, then things slow up for two weeks, and then we pick it up again in January. But it uh, should be a good time of year from a trading perspective, so we'll see what we get. Uh, here's the uh, the data coming out this week. We've got the right move HPI out of UK, 7 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday. China does a data jump there. GDP, industrial production, fixed asset investment, and retail sales numbers, and then press conference from the NBS. We've got uh, German uh, Bubba monthly report out of Europe on Monday. Not much data on Monday total uh, here in the U.S. We've got the NAHB housing market, market index. We've got the election in Canada on Monday. Uh, monetary policy meeting minutes from the last meeting in Australia. All the way to Tuesday already. Swiss trade balance, German PPI, current account out of Europe, wholesale sales out of Canada, housing starts and building permits out of the U.S. Uh, Fed members speaking. We've got the uh, New Zealand's GDT price index that night. Actually, it says that morning. It should be at night. Fed Chairman Yellen speaking. Chairwoman, chairperson. We'll just say chair. Visitor arrivals out of New Zealand also uh, Tuesday night. CB leading index out of Australia and the MI leading index. Trade balance out of Japan. Credit card spending out of New Zealand. We're already into uh, Wednesday here. We've got uh, all industries activity out of Japan overnight. Public sector net borrowing in the UK. Uh, we've got a rate announcement out of the Bank of Canada at 10 a.m. Eastern time on Thursday. Crude oil inventories, that's the weekly number here in the U.S. Australia's got a couple of minor data points. Spanish unemployment rate, this is Thursday at 3 a.m. Eastern Time. Retail sales out of the U.K. Minimum, uh, this is the ECB, the European Bank, 
uh, Central Bank rate announcement at 7.45 a.m. Thursday, so that'll move the euro most likely. Retail sales out of Canada and then the ECB press conference right after that. Uh, we've got unemployment claims here in the U.S. That's the weekly number. Housing price index. Uh, consumer confidence out of Europe. Existing home sales. CB leading index here. Natty gas storage. That's a weekly number here in the U.S. on Thursday. Flash manufacturing PMI out of Japan. CB leading index out of uh, China. And then we move into Friday. We've got the uh, French, uh, German, and broad European. Oops, sorry about that. French, German, and broad European uh, manufacturing PMI numbers. Flash services data as well. Uh, Italian retail sales. We've got the uh, CPI data out of Canada, not U.S. We already had that here in the U.S. We've got uh, flash manufacturing PMI out of the U.S. And the next weekend, uh, Switzerland, broad European, and UK time change. Uh, remember that occurs one week earlier. So that kind of messes things up for a day or so because Europe and the US are now an hour shifted and that affects the technicals. So the following Monday, Sunday night, Monday might be a little awkward while they align those. That'll be the same though, the week after when the US finally does their time change heading into uh, post Halloween and heading into November. Uh, so what from a data perspective, not, not anything major here in the US to focus on. We do have a lot of earnings that doesn't necessarily affect Forex, but that's uh, going on here in the US this week. Uh, the week after this one, we do have uh, the first look at gross domestic product for the third quarter. And like I said, that time change and uh, the unemployment rate, that'll all be the following week. Uh, so for this week, it's a straightforward week. Watch that rate announcement out of Europe Thursday morning. We will be in the lab as usual, helping you make money. If you've not taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. You will get all of our trade calls for two weeks. Our six-month stock mentorship program now includes a money-back guarantee. Charts, as usual, brought to you by eSignal. If you do find these videos useful, please like them on YouTube. It does help us out. Have a great trading week.